G'day guys, what's cracking? It's Ralph here and today we're looking at how the Z9 handles astrophotography. But first, a very important announcement from this channel. Today is my birthday. Yes, put in the comments below how old you think I am. Go on, have a guess, be kind, be nice. And the answer is, you can pause it now and go down. All right, I'll tell you the answer. The answer is 45, I'm 45 years old today. I know, I look like I'm 28, but you'll be forgiven for that. If you want to throw, show me a coffee or do something like that, there's plenty of options down below. Um, but again, not necessary. I have loved this journey with you and it, I learn much more than I think I teach. So very thankful to all of your comments and corrections and um, things along the way and your encouragement. You're a very encouraging bunch and I'm very thankful that I get to explore this whole world with you. All right, enough of that. Let's get into it. Um, the Z9 or Z9 from Nikon or Nikon is a brilliant camera. I have really thoroughly enjoyed it. I didn't buy it for Astro, but it has 45 megapixels, which means on the large sensor that it has on the full frame sensor, it means you can, you can really zoom in and appreciate some of the detail it picks up the lesser megapixel cameras in my experience, don't quite grasp. There's been literally this Milky Way season, there's been three nights, three nights, and one of them I couldn't shoot, where the sky's even been moderately clear and black during a new moon. So that's why you haven't seen much Astro stuff, because I just haven't had a chance to go out. So I had a chance to go out with the Z9, put it through its paces. Now, I think the um, the way you get ahead when you shoot Astro is actually having a lens with a very wide open aperture. So a, a 1.8 is amazing, a 2.8 if you, um, you kind of want to start there. You could go a 4, like you can shoot Astro on a 4, you just need to increase your ISO, and as you increase your ISO it gets muddy. I'm sure you're across all of that stuff so I don't want to waste your time with it but there's three functions that this camera does that other cameras that I've used do not do and they make it so much easier and uh, I think enhance your astro world and so the first is called starlight view and you go to starlight view by going to the menu select custom go to shooting and display which is the D menu and that's where we're going to hang around for these three tips and you want to go to D 10. Now D10 is called Starlight View and what Starlight View does is when you put it on it brightens everything in your frame so basically it increases the exposure and the uh, highlights and the whites of that which you're looking at. That has nothing to do with the photo you take it's just so you can see and all of a sudden the the stars pop out of the black and so it's much easier to focus on. I usually put it in manual focus, I'll then zoom in, I'll use my plus button on the back of the camera, use plus button, you go right in so you can see a star and you gradually move the wheel until it's just bang on. If you're going to shoot star trails you want it a tiny bit blurry, if you're going to shoot Milky Way you want it pinpoint sharp, which you do with manual focus. That way when you go to press your button, if you're not a back button focuser like I am, but if you're a shutter button focuser, when you press that it's not going to stuff things up, so you must shoot in manual. So that's the first one, you can just turn that on and off with D10. The second one is really quite ingenious and this is based around the fact that when you're out in shooting Astro you're out in the dark and your eyes grow accustomed to that dark and then what happens if you turn a flashlight on or your bright lights from your camera you're blinded and you can't see what you're doing and your eyes go from this like shoom, and they don't know what's going on but the lowest frequency of light is red and therefore it's the easiest on the eyes when the eyes need to adjust. So what Nikon have done is said let's make a menu that can be seen in red and so to access that, you go to the custom settings menu, you go to D11, yes, 11, and its name is not helpful in the slightest. Its name is warm display color. I call it like infrared ninja mode or something, guys, like, come on, spice it up a bit. And you have several options here. The first option is mode one, and mode one makes everything in red. So your settings, your menu settings on your screen, as well as the um, subject that you're shooting. So your Milky Way's in red, everything's in red. But you may think that's not helpful. I just want the settings in red and the menu in red, but I want to see the colors or the textures or the detail of that which I'm shooting normal. So you want mode 
2. So mode 2 doesn't make everything red, just makes your writing on your screen red so your eyes can grow accustomed to that. And once it's done that, you can then change the brightness of the red that you have. So my, my eyes are terrible. So when I'm shooting Astro, I've, I've tried this, and if my eyes were good, it'd be a banger. And if I took glasses with me, which I should that I don't when I'm photographing, uh, um, then it would be ideal. But even with red on its brightness, I'm struggling to see. But friends of mine who have great eyes tell me that it's a pleasure to look at when it's dark. And the third one, which is in D12, is called LCD Illumination. And that makes all your buttons illuminated. Watch this, I don't know if you can see it, but here we go. <laughs> it does the same function as the on and off. It has an on and off and then you click it around one more and it makes everything glow so you can see what you're doing. It's just a faint, nice, delicate glow. Very, very helpful. So you can turn it on and off. So you might want to be, you're going out on an astro shoot and you, you set it um, and you have it so all the time you can see your buttons and you can see where they are, especially if you're learning your camera. If you know your camera, you know kind of where the buttons are. But if you want to jump to it, you just click this one here. Same as if this top LCD screen is a bit dark, you can go there. Now I used to have that function uh, through this button, not through the menu, on my Nikon D7200 and I think D7100 when I used to shoot with them. Super handy if you're shooting at night. So let me talk about this image. I'm going to pull it up for you so you can enjoy it. I am. Um, I was on holidays recently, uh, as you know, in Victoria and while I was down there, we came home from dinner one night, I looked up at the sky and it was just like gloriously clear. And I'm like, the Milky Way is out. Babe, do you want to come with me? And she's like, nah. So I'm going to go shoot it. She's like, all right. So I went out to shoot the Milky Way. And it was a blinder. And I took a number of images. This one I'm most happy with and settled with. It's actually in my calendar. I've got a calendar that's just come out. So it's, it's one of the shots in that calendar. It was just stunning. But I used these different mechanisms on here. And I wanted to film a video of it while I was doing it, talking you through except I'm not entirely sure if it was private property or not. So we're just going to say it wasn't, but let's just also say I didn't want to attract more attention to myself by having lights and microphone and me yelling at it. Yeah, it's, I'm not sure. It wasn't. Surely it wasn't, so we're, we're all good. But gee, it was a good it was a good night. It was easy to get the Milky Way in focus, and that's some of the results I got. Now, I also um, that was shot on uh, the, the settings that are down the bottom of the screen. But I, I shot it. Um, I shot another one uh, where you change your ISO to 100 or 200. And you shoot a star trail. Uh, the problem with that was the clouds then came in. So the clouds came in and my camera ran out of battery. Although when this says it's run out of battery, I reckon you get as much out of it as you do with a normal, um, like your, your Z5s or Z6s on, on their batteries. I reckon when this battery runs out, it's a big, it's a big beast. Anyway, I found those three things really helpful and I thought you should know about it because some of you have asked, how does the, the Z9 go on astrophotography? And that's how it goes, folks. Uh, I'd love to encourage you, if you have one, to find a starry night. Go out, have a play, see how you go. And if you've got some other tips and tricks that you think are specific to this camera, because obviously I could share a lot more about astrophotography, which I have done in other videos. There'll be a link at the end of this video. But um, if you want to, uh, if you have other tips and tricks about the Z9 when it comes to astro or low light, these tips will also help if it's low light photography you're doing in, then please put a comment below. Say good day, can wish me happy birthday. Or I know, as a birthday present, you could subscribe or just like it or yeah, whatever you want. If you're not, you might not be into the birthday presents. You might be just like, happy birthday, Ralph. Have a good one. And I will. Thanks so much, everybody. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.